Hi everyone, my name is PJ Tigunde and I'm a business strategist on the sports and entertainment team at UBS. And I'm here today with Joel Soriano, star of the St. John's men's basketball team. Hi Joel, thanks for being here with me today. Well PJ, appreciate the opportunity. So let's start by talking about why St. John's. I understand that a lot has changed for you since you got here, including the coaching staff. But what was it about St. John's that really made you feel confident in coming here? And what was it that made you knew, know that this was the right place for you? Uh, well, when I was growing up, um, St. John has been, been around like my background a lot, a lot because of the players that used to play here, past players like Chris Mullen, uh, Felipe Lopez, Shamari Pons. That was, a, that was a big guy growing up when I was watching him, especially in high school. So the culture around St. John's has always been around me. Um, I played here when I was in high school um, for championship games, uh, the two years I was at Stepanak High School. So just being around the culture, the building, I'm, I, I was kind of used to it. And it always was a big dream for me to come here and play here just because how big the school was nationally. It was like kind of like a, a dream come true when I got in the portal and then uh, I, I got the offer from coach. I was just really excited to be able to c come here and play here and have an opportunity just to display my talents. I can imagine that's so exciting to really make your dream come true. So what was the adjustment like in terms of settling into this new environment since you were a transfer student? Like what were some of the hard parts about it? And what did you learn about yourself in the process? Really, I would say the hardest thing for me was probably like adjusting to the speed and the physicality of the Big East. I think that was the biggest thing for me. I kind of knew because people were telling me about how, how, how difficult the conference was, but I didn't really, you can't really know until you, until you experience it. So I would think that was the biggest thing for me to get adjusted to was definitely like the speed of the game, physicality, and how competitive this this league is. What steps did you have to take to adjust? Was it practicing more? Was it putting in more hours? Or like how did you kind of rise to the level of the physicality? As more games came, as more me getting comfortable with my teammates, practicing, and just playing a lot more games, I, I, I got more adjusted to everything. Definitely working out more, um, lifting a lot more, and just Learn it from, from your mistakes, watching film by yourself, asking for help, asking for advice from your coaches, your teammates, people that have been through the league. So I think my biggest thing was just being able to be coachable. So speaking of asking for help, did you have any mentors or people that really helped guide you once you got here to help you become successful? My my two coaches, my AU coach, uh, Coach Munch, and then my Stepanek High School coach was Coach Swain. That was, that was the one that really had me take basketball very seriously. So they were always around for most of my basketball career. And they kind of helped me adjust to the new th new speed of things, especially because they knew how hard this uh, league was. But they told me I wasn't really expecting it as as it started. So that, I think those are the two people that really helped me the most and uh, got it. So I love that. That's something that we talk about a lot at my team, at the sports entertainment team at UBS, which is the importance of having the right people in your corner. So having the right mentors, having the right people that are invested in you that want to see you succeed. So I'm happy you had that. Appreciate that. So I want to pivot and talk about NIL, the name, image, and likeness space. This is a space that has obviously evolved during your time as a student athlete. So how do you feel about NIL and the opportunities that it provides? Uh, I think it's great. I think it's, uh, especially for student athletes that are very popular in college, and now they finally get a, a chance to, to make some endorsements and, and, such, and so forth mm -hmm. off their names. So I think it's, it's, it's very helpful in a way, especially for people to help their families, help their loved ones, and just getting them prepared for a professional life if they have if they have that going forward. I feel like this is a great, great way to start managing your money, start managing your name, mm -hmm. uh, building your names. So I'm very excited for it, and I just, I just hope that it doesn't get too much out of hand mm -hmm. later on, because I know it's still new. I know there's still people learning about it. Uh, I just hope it stays the course. And how has your personal experience with it been, to just navigating deals or endorsements, et cetera? Uh, it's been great, to be honest with you. I've had a lot of people help me through through the process. I wouldn't say it was it was all great, but at the same time, I'm still learning. I know this is going to be uh, something that I'm going to be working on for my whole life. So. Uh, I'm just glad that I'm getting able to go through it uh, during college. Did you feel like you were prepared to handle the financial responsibility that comes with receiving NIL money? Uh, yeah, I think I was. My family, my my uncle, my mom, she, they really helped me with my finances a lot, uh, especially before I started college. So I think I was, I want to say used to, but a, a little bit prepared, mm -hmm. especially to handle my money. The biggest thing in that now is just like how I'm saving my money, where I'm putting it to. Um, how, am I, how am I using it? So I think give a lot of credit to them. That's great. That's great. 
So we see at my team that a lot of young student athletes, they're not always prepared to handle the kind of responsibility that comes with receiving NIL money, because sometimes it can be up to six figures. So we created something called the NIL Playbook, which is essentially a guide that highlights some of the considerations that athletes should keep in mind when kind of going through this process, such as you know knowing the basics of finances, knowing the basics of budgeting, and knowing to set money aside for taxes, along with knowing how to manage your brand and be careful with what you're posting on social media. So it definitely sounds like you're already on top of that. How do you think NIL has changed your experience as a student athlete? For me, it's, uh, it's been more watching certain things that you do now, just because you're always watched, especially as a high profile athlete. Not that I haven't been watched before, but I just feel like it's on another uh, magnitude now. And just being smart, at the end of the day, you, your bodies are like your temple. You, for me, this is your brand. Uh, this is what how people are gonna recognize you. So I just try to stay positive, try to do the right thing, just so, just for the future to come. Have you seen kind of any of your peers fall into kind of bad situations with NIL? Not with, not anybody that I know. I've seen certain um, headlines and stories on the news and stuff, but not anybody that I know. I think most of my teammates, most of my friends are very uh, responsible in that category. Mm -hmm. That's good. So what differentiates St. John's from other universities when it comes to how they treat student athletes? I know that you have a unique perspective considering that you came from another school. Um, I think St. John's, the one thing I would say about how they treat these student athletes is just how equally they treat them. I feel like there's not really like somebody that's really higher above anybody from the administrative staff to the athletic trainers. They just make sure you, you feel welcome here. And that, that's what I really like. I feel like everybody has a chance to be themselves. And you can't really put anybody above anybody. That's the biggest thing I've noticed. Mm -hmm. That's fantastic. So during your time at St. John's, you played several games at UBS Arena. What was your first impression of the arena and what is it like to play there? My biggest impression about the arena was how big the arena was from, from the jump that I got in there. The first time I played there was against Kansas. Even though we didn't get the win, it was just a great experience to be in that arena. How packed the arena was, how loud it got, and just uh, the overall feeling with the arena. It's a new arena, but you, it has a great feeling to a great atmosphere around it. I'm definitely biased, but I think it's one of the best arenas that I've ever been in, um, and I always love going there. So for you, how does it compare to the other arenas that you've been to? Well, when I, when I look at it like that, usually I'm always in a game setting, so I'm really trying to stay focused and trying to really zone out mostly everybody in there, but definitely, you definitely feel the atmosphere. It is probably top five of my arenas that I've played uh, in my career. The biggest thing that I've noticed about UBS is just like how, like how everything's like around you, like especially when you're running the floor, when you're running the court. The locker rooms is amazing. And this is an overall great experience. How does your mindset or game preparation change when you're playing games off campus? I know that every athlete kind of has their own pregame rituals or routines. How does yours change when you're playing at arenas? I just try to keep the same thing, not, not, not really make anything too difficult on me, especially because I'm, I'm, we're mostly traveling a lot. So whether that's taking a nap, get a prayer in, stretching, going out to the court, getting shots up. Um, so I really don't try to put something that's really like, that I need to be at a certain arena to do something. Um, so most of my routine stays kind of the same. Do you have like a pre-game like playlist or kind of music that you listen to that kind of pumps you up? I, w I wouldn't say that I have a, a pre-game playlist. Uh, it kind of varies from for myself. It depends what kind of mood I'm in for the game. So I could either go no music, um, listen to some, some rap and R&B, or I listen to some gospel music. It really depends on how I'm feeling that day. Jalen Brunson on Knicks said that he likes to listen to Justin Bieber before every game, but it sounds like that's not, that's nah, not you. Nah, 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 nah. <laughs> what does it mean to you to be playing Division One basketball in New York City? Like once you got to this level, how did you, how did you feel? I would say it was just, uh, it just really showed how, how much like hard work really paid off. I was kind of a late bloomer. I played when I started playing when I was 14 getting adjusted to everything, getting adjusted to the high school game, and then seeing how much kids were getting offers, how good kids were um, playing in um, AAU tournaments, and just seeing like the, co the competition level, what, what it takes to get to a uh, Division One standard. I would just say it was, I, I'm very proud of myself and, and the people around me, just like how hard I worked to get to where I am. So I give a lot of thanks to them and thanks to God. So freshman year, Joel, at Stepanak, would you have ever thought that you would be here right now? Uh, where I'm at now, no, I, I can't. I can't imagine it. Just from how I was playing, how, how everything started, no. 
Playing close to home, was that something that kind of factored in your decision to stay local to New York City? If so, how has it been kind of being close to home, playing basketball? I want to say if it had a factor in it. I think it just it was like kind of like a plus, like just being able to stay home, staying close to family. It's been great. Having my mom, my brothers, my, my grandma, my grandpa, my whole family come to games, uh, coming out to support me. Uh, it's been definitely great. Definitely made a lot of memories. Maybe then able to have my mom to come to senior night and so on and such forth. So I'm just very uh, grateful for for that opportunity because I know some players don't be able to uh, weren't able to have that. So I'm just very uh, thankful for that. How important is your support system to you? Uh, very important. They're the people that get me through on a day to day basis. They know when I'm down. They they, they they don't know you. They know me better than myself. So I'm just grateful to have him. I love him to death. And I know you've talked a lot about God as well so far. Kind of what role does God and your faith play in your life? Uh, plays a big role. Um, he gets he gets me through a lot of tough times in my life and he brings me a lot of joy. My faith has been, been with me since I was a kid growing up. I give a lot of thanks to my grandmother for putting God in my life. And I always try to keep him around me because he, he's the person that got me here today. So I give a lot of thanks to him. So you're from Yonkers, meaning that you're familiar with the New York City area. Is there a certain thing or place about New York City that you love that you feel like most people don't know about? There's a uh, waterfront in Yonkers. That's, okay. That's like somewhere I go when I'm very, like when I need to get alone and just, just space out a little bit. I don't like hop a fence. It's kind of, it's kind of trespass. Like, <laughs> nobody knows, but uh, it's kind of a spot. I just go out there, just chill, just, just like clear my head. So I think that's the best spot. So I can't go or else I'd be nah, trespassing. No. Okay. Noted. <laughs> what would you say is the most unique thing about going to college in New York City? Just having the whole New York City as your campus, um, being able to walk around the city, experience new cultures. I think there's mostly every culture is in New York. So just just to see that diversity and, and see different people and see and try different foods, experience uh, different things, I think is the best thing about what New York has to offer. So I think that's the biggest thing. So for the second straight season, you've been named a top 10 candidate for the Naismith Center of the Year Award. That is an incredible achievement, and I hope you're proud of yourself. But how did you feel when you found out about this? Uh, when I found out, I wouldn't say I was like very stoked. I was just kind of like, I mean, you put enough of, enough of the work in, so not that I'm uh, not excited for the, for the nomination. I'm very grateful for it, of course. But I still, I don't really like try to get too much into it just cause I have a long goal at the end and I'm still in season trying to win games. And I feel like that's the biggest thing that you have to put your focus to. Um, but I'm also very grateful for the nominations. So honored, but not too excited, not letting it get to your head. Yeah. That's fair, I understand that. How would you say that St. John's has prepared you for life after college? I think it's prepared me a lot, uh, showing me uh, how much adversity I'm going through adversity, a lot of teamwork, leadership skills that I learned here, and that I think is key for uh, just after college, after my career with basketball. I think just the connections I've built here with with administrative staff, people, alumni, has been great. So I feel like there's a lot of connections that I could come back and fall back on um, when I'm done with my career, whenever that is. So I'm, I'm very grateful for that. What do you kind of envision your professional career to look like? And what do you think are some of the steps you need to take to get there? I hope I have a long career in the NBA. Playing 10 plus years on an NBA team, being able to win some championships. Are the kind of steps I need to take to, to get there, just being more consistent, I feel like. Whether that's on the court or off the court, just being consistent in life. I think that that'll just help me get to where I want to be. And I know that you know, with being professional comes a big responsibility with your finances as well. And that's something that we talk about with having kind of the right people, like I said, the right financial advisors, the right guidance to make sure that you could be handling that money in a good way. So are there any people or moments either on the court or in the classroom that kind of stand out to you as being extremely memorable during your time here? It's like kind of like an off the court moment, but when we uh, beat Villanova, just by how, how, how the guys were like after, just how excited our team was, uh, happy for each other. That even the guys that only played about like two minutes on the court or were so excited for for the next one. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that that really that win right there brought our team closer to to where we need to be. I think that's the biggest thing I'm I'm excited to remember for. It's gonna be a core memory. Core yeah, memory for sure. 
So when you think about your time at St. John's, what are some of the things that you're most proud of, kind of both on and off the court that you've done? Some things I'm proud of are uh, just a lot of the off the court activities that I've done, like dribble for a cure. Being able to do that and help kids that, that, that are in need, that are going through tough times, is just kind of warms my heart, just being able to, to put a smile on their face, especially with the tough things that they're going through in their life. I think that's like one of the most exciting things too, just uh, being able to give back to a community just because they see, they see you at this, this pedestal and this there, and it was really just, you're just playing a sport mm -hmm. in my eyes, but um, just being able to make them happy. Kind of making that impact, giving back, that's super, I can tell that you're passionate about that. So you've had an incredible run here. How do you want the St. John's community to remember you, Joel Soriano? Uh, I want to remember it as a very personable man, a uh, loving, caring man, gave, gave all for his teammates, his team, um, and everybody at the school, just a person that was, that you could say that just gave, gave it all when he stepped on that court and off the court. So on behalf of UBS, I want to thank you and St. John for letting me sit down with you today. This has been a pleasure and we really appreciate it. Thank you, pleasure to be mine.